One of the most overlooked things that people miss when setting up their perfect pain cave is something that you will not see in any photo posted on Instagram, Facebook, or Reddit. Without it, not a lot of this equipment even works, and without optimizing it or having it correctly set up, you'll likely have a really bad time with your equipment disconnecting or being slow to respond. In fact, poor wireless connections are the root cause of a lot of support queries that I see posted from, why can't I connect to my smart trainer? Why can't I connect to my heart rate monitor? Why does my avatar not move when I start pedaling the bike? Why does my companion app not connect? Or where do all those other riders go when they disappear and reappear during my ride? Now, those are just some examples of problems that can occur when you have wireless connection issues. Now with the recent move towards Bluetooth devices such as the Zwift Play controllers, the Zwift Ride, and newer smart trainers such as the Jet Black Victory, the Elite Justo 2, and newer Wahoo products, just to name a few, having native Wi-Fi, having an optimized wireless network is just as important as anything else you'll spend time and money on setting up your perfect indoor pain cave. Now before getting into all the details, this video today is sponsored by Asus. They've sent over their Asus Expert Wi-Fi EBM68 Tri-Band Mesh Wi-Fi System. This product covers three of the five optimization topics coming up in this video, which is very convenient. Now the EBM68 has extendable Wi-Fi coverage with Expert Wi-Fi allowing for up to 12 mesh node connections to extend your network with AI mesh features. I've been using two of these to extend the network coverage into the Llama Lab. And with this setup, it supports both 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi connections, as well as allowing advanced configuration options for those networks, which again is very useful for one of the topics that I'll be discussing here today. I'll put links in the video description below to this specific Wi-Fi system as well as other ASUS network products if you're interested in optimizing your setup with ASUS. Okay, let's get to the five tips that I have today which all apply to every indoor cycling setup regardless of the software platform that you're using. Starting off with number one, wireless network frequencies. Now indoor cycling equipment, being it Ant, Bluetooth and smart trainers with Wi-Fi currently use the 2.4 frequency band. These devices will usually happily share that frequency together but when things get busy, bad things happen. You get dropouts, connection issues, etc. Ideally, you want to move as many wireless devices that you have away from that 2.4 gigahertz range as possible and onto five or six gigahertz frequencies. Things like your phone, laptops, Apple TVs, even your Apple Watch all support higher frequency Wi-Fi connection standards. But the key requirement for them to use these higher frequencies is to have a wireless access point that supports them. Now, if you're using a router or access point provided from your ISP, say six or seven years ago, it might be time to look at something a little newer. What to look for in the specifications will be something like Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 7 or higher. On to tip number two, and this is all about network reach or network range. If your pain cave is set up in the garage or your basement, for reasons unknown, these are usually the furthest locations away from your access point. In those scenarios, your phone may have good Wi-Fi, but your Apple TV may struggle to connect. A solution I've been using for a long time are mesh Wi-Fi setups, where the main access point handles the internet connection and routing, and the secondary, tertiary, or more access points act as network range extenders. Now, there's a number of generic Wi-Fi extender solutions out there that can be added to an existing network to extend your range. I've kept clear of those and used proper mesh setups to ensure there's no complications. Or in technical terms, no additional subnets added, no shared backhaul, and no compatibility problems. Now, building on tip number one, if you're looking for a new wireless setup to support five or six gigahertz connections, and also want to ensure you have good network coverage, then definitely look at getting yourself a mesh solution. On to tip number three now, and that is do not use 2.4 gig Wi-Fi connection channel 10. Now, although 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is now considered a legacy standard, its use is very much unavoidable. One tip to ensure your 2.4 network is less likely to interfere with your Ant Plus devices in particular is to avoid using channel 10, which is exactly 2.457 gig, which is exactly the same frequency as Ant Plus users. Now, a lot of Wi-Fi setups will allow you to configure that channel manually, typically under the advanced settings. Let's have a look at that on the Asus setup now. Okay, pulling up the web management console of the EBM68, logging in with admin credentials, all the details here on the status screen. You can see here that I have nine devices on 2.4 gig. I have 11 plus two using five. So I've moved a lot of devices over to the five gig range. That's a good thing. But for devices that are still on 2.4, let's make sure that's not on channel 10. We can get to that via settings. Under general, I scroll down to the 2.4 gigahertz network, which still needs to be enabled for my legacy devices, including smart trainers. And my control channel is set to number one or channel one, which is as far away from channel 10 as it can be. So that's a good thing. I'm good to go here. Everything else can remain the same. Click apply, make sure those settings go onto the router and I'm good to go. Okay, we're more than halfway there. Onto tip number four, switch from Ant Plus 
to Bluetooth for your devices. Now, as mentioned in the intro, there's been a big shift towards training equipment using Bluetooth rather than AMP Plus in recent years. The Bluetooth support on Windows 11 has come a long way. It's now a lot better but a lot of people still actively avoid it. According to Mike Hanny, the creator of Zwiftalyzer, the excellent online Zwift log analyzer, it's a better protocol to use. And my most recent experience with an optimized wireless setup supports Mike's claims. I'll put a link in the video description below to an excellent deep dive video on this topic that Mike has posted over on YouTube. Definitely worth the watch if you wanna know a little bit more about App Plus versus Bluetooth. And finally, onto tip number five, and that is upgrade your Bluetooth. Related to point number four, upgrading Bluetooth on your PC is one of the cheapest ways to resolve Bluetooth problems. Something as small and as cheap as the TP-Link TP500 USB stick costs around 10 US dollars, which can save hours of troubleshooting. In the Llama Lab here, I have a HP Omen gaming PC. It's a few years old now and runs with it. 4K, 60 frames a second, no problems at all. So it's gonna stay there for quite some time. One problem I had though was the onboard Bluetooth 4.2 chipset. It was laggy with the Zwift Play controllers. Disabling the onboard Bluetooth, installing this little thing here solved the problem right away. It was one of the cheapest and easiest solutions I've come across in many years. I'll put a link in the video description below where you can pick these up on Amazon or something similar for your PC setup. A few months later, I did take things to the next level with an upgrade to the mini PCI Express Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. That was around $25. This is also an option if you want to get a little bit more hands-on with your setup in upgrading Bluetooth on your PC if it supports these cards. Now I did say five tips, but I'll add the bonus tip in here because some wireless access points have the option to enable Bluetooth coexistence under the 2.4 gig Wi-Fi settings. Likely under the advanced settings, and without going into too much detail, this could be a problem solver for some environments that are having issues with legacy Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices. Okay, and wrap up today, hopefully these tips will help ensure your next indoor ride, or the next few months of indoor rides if you're heading into winter, are trouble free. Thanks again to ASUS for sponsoring this video, and thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon.